The last application that we want to take a look at in this section is surplus. And specifically, we're going to look at both consumers and producer surplus. So consumer surplus refers to consumers who are willing to pay more than the current asking price for an item, meaning they actually save money on their purchase. So whatever that item is currently being sold for, they would have still purchased it even if the price was higher. Producer surplus refers to suppliers or producers who are willing to sell their item for less than the current asking price, meaning they make more on each purchase. So if you're willing to sell an item for as low as $75, but you're able to sell it for $100, $125, you're making more. So there are formulas for calculating each of these. So for the consumer surplus, at a price level of P bar, so some specific given price point, we can calculate consumer surplus as the integral from 0 to X bar, where X bar is some specific demand level, which we'll have to find. So we'll integrate from 0 to some demand level. D of X, which is going to be some given price demand equation, minus P bar, that given price, So if we integrate the difference between that price demand equation and our given price over the interval from zero to some specific demand level, we'll be able to calculate that consumer surplus. Producer surplus, again, at a price level of P bar, so some specific given price point, can be calculated as the integral from 0 to x bar, so again, some specific demand level that we'll need to find. We'll be integrating the function p bar minus s of x, where s of x is some given price supply equation. So we apply one of those two formulas to find either consumer surplus or producer surplus. So in example 7, the price demand equation for a certain company's product is P equals D of X, so we've got a price demand equation, 500 minus 0.04X. We want to find the demand, so essentially we want to find our value for X bar whenever the price is P bar equals 160. So in order to find that, we're going to use this equation, P equals 500 minus 0.04X. We're going to substitute in the 160 which is our value for P bar. So that'll be equal to 500 minus 0 0.04 times X bar. When we solve for X here, we're getting that specific value of X bar that appears in each of those two formulas we just introduced. So we could solve that relatively simply or use Wolfram Alpha to take care of that. But this will give us a result of X bar equal to 8,500. So now that we know P bar, a specific price, and X bar, a specific demand level, we can find the consumer's surplus at this specific price level by integrating from 0 to X bar, which in this case is 8,500, And then the function we're going to integrate is 500 minus 0.04x minus our value for P bar, so that $160. So integrating this function over this interval from 0 to 8,500 will give us the consumer surplus. So we can integrate. 500 minus 0.04x minus 160 for x equals 0 to 8,500. And we get a result of $1,445,000. So what this means is the total savings to consumers who are willing to pay more than 
the current asking price, which is that $160 for the company's products is the $1,445,000. We can look at answering the same type of question, in this case with a consumer surplus. So here we're given a price supply equation, which is a little bit more complicated. We're given a supply or a price of P bar equals $62. So we would use the same process we used in part A before. We would take the 62 and set it equal to our price supply equation. So in this case, when we're solving for x, that's that value for x bar that we're interested in. So again, we could use Wolfram Alpha to solve that equation. And in this case, it would give us a result of x bar equals actually two different values. It would give us values of negative 596.14 and 262.80. So we would actually get two solutions. But if we think about the idea that x relates to some demand level, demand isn't going to be a negative value. It has to be positive. So we can throw out the negative value, which means the only value that we want to keep here is the 262.8 or approximately 263. So that gives us our value for x bar. To find the producer surplus then, we'll integrate from 0 to x bar, the 263. And our formula in this case is going to be p bar, so that given price value, minus our price supply equation. So in this case, the parentheses around the second equation are very important. Or if you wanted to, you could rewrite it by distributing that negative through. But we either need to distribute the negative or keep those parentheses around this statement to make sure that we're ending up with the equation that we want or the formula that we want. So in this case, we would be integrating 62 minus the quantity 15 plus 0.1x plus 0.0003x squared for x equals 0 to 263, that value for x bar. And in this case, we get a result of about $7,083. So the total gain to producers who are willing to supply their product at a price lower than $62, which is that given current price, the total gain is $7,000 or $7,083.